천 여러분 나 한국어 친구들 담다. Okay, so today I will be sharing my top five tips for learning Korean from scratch with you beautiful, beautiful people. So this video was highly, highly requested, and it's about time that I make that video. Don't you think? Don't you think? Um, but yeah, so if you don't know me, my name is Natalia. I've been studying Korean for almost three years now, and I spent a year studying abroad in South Korea learning Korean. Um, so uh, all the tips I'm going to give you I've learned through experience so you can trust that they're accurate and I'm giving you the best information I possibly can. Yep. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into those tips. So go go! Tip number one! Alright, so tip number one is really basic. You guys probably all know it, so I'm gonna make it real quick. You gotta learn Hangul. I know. I know. You can't use that romanization. I know it's really tempting in the beginning, you know. For a lot of us, it looks more familiar than Korean. Um, specifically, my English speakers. I'm, call, I'm talking to y'all. Um, so, as an English speaker, it's much easier for us to go look at the romanization because it looks familiar it's easier on our eyes than looking at like these squares and circles i completely understand i like to think of it as a toxic friendship it kind of it looks great in the beginning and then as you get further on your language learning journey you realize they're not really it's not really your friend in fact using romanization will really keep you from developing a native like accent for example english speakers right um we see the romanization and it's hard for us to take that english filter off so that's why a lot of us pronounce some korean words as if they were um if they had an english accent instead of a korean one you know just our brain is like english filter this is this is supposed to be like a filter if you if you didn't catch that anyway so again i would said i would make that short but uh move away from romanization use the hunger i promise you your pronunciation will be so much better if you just start using the hunger right away. Tip number two. So tip number two is to learn vocabulary that is relevant to you. Uh, so for those of you that have asked me on Instagram, that have DM'd me, um, you already know this example. But the example that I like to use is that if you're a student, it's easier to learn vocabulary about student life, right? To learn things about like dating and stuff because that's, that's what your life is about. Your life is about homework, class, how you think your teacher is mean to you and how there's a boy across the room that's real cute or girl or who or person you know you, you feel me what I'm trying to say is it's easier to learn words about your life than it is to learn words about something else so I'll go to a really extreme example okay maybe not so extreme cooking <laughs> so if um, cooking is your hobby this probably won't apply to you but as a beginner you don't need to learn the words like simmer to dice to What's another word to f fry? Like you don't need those words if you're a beginner, you know? I mean, unless you are cooking every day, you're not gonna really need to know those words. You can wait until later, you know? Like there's a reason that there are business level Korean courses and like medical Korean courses, you feel me? Cause not everyone needs to know those really specific words. So I know it's tempting in the beginning, you wanna be like, I wanna be fancy, but like just, just shove them to the side and be like, I'll come back to you later <laughs> you know you feel me um but yeah so my tip number two is basically to learn vocabulary that's relevant to you because it's easier to remember it and if you want a step-by-step -step method on how i study vocabulary you can check out this video here where i talk about how i study vocabulary um specifically but anyway again learn vocabulary that is relevant to you tip number three so tip number three is all about grammar because you got to know how to arrange your words to get your point across because you can't just list off words and expect people to know what you're saying yeah. When you are going through a lesson or when you are going through whatever you're using to study and learn um, I was about to say German to learn grammar Make sure that you are writing your own practice sentences So I know it's really easy to go through a lesson read all the example sentences and be like, yep I got this. I'm a pro. I'm a genius And then two days later, you'll be like, what was that again? I don't even this, did I learn this? Are you sure? So my tip to you is to take those example sentences and start substituting your own words so if it says, I go to school every day, change it to, I go to the store every day, or I go home every day. Basically, um, start making your own sentences so that you can actually remember the grammar because it's a lot easier to read and understand than it is to write and speak. I think we can all agree on that because the first two are passive activities and the other two, 
that's all on you boo boo you mm, those are active you got to remember everything by yourself <laughs> okay so my tip to you again is to write your own sentences if you have to just substitute out, substitute out the words that are in the sentences that are in your lessons or whatever you're using um, with your own words or different words just so you can get used to writing the grammar down and making your own uh, sentences and expressing your own thoughts um, another tip that I have for you guys is to read your sentences out loud and read the example sentences out loud because it'll get you more used to speaking I know we're talking about grammar but I'm just saying pro tip pro tip read it out loud to yourself I promise it'll make a difference um, because I've learned that a lot of us read faster than we speak when it comes to a foreign language because we're not used to speaking it yep another reason you're gonna want to write your own practice sentences and write your own sentences to practice that grammar is that it'll actually show you whether you understand the grammar or not sometimes you'll notice okay I'm wanting to use this a regular verb with this grammar but how do I need to conjugate this or you'll be like wait a second can this grammar be used in this situation how about that situation how about this situation um, so basically just writing your own sentences will help you not only understand the grammar more but also uh, help you know if you actually understand it which is key you gotta know if you understand it in order to learn it properly right tip number four is to not overlook listening don't do that I know I know you're probably looking at me like Natalia I already knew that like you're wasting my time I'm not I promise I'm not um, but okay so as a beginner I know it's really tempting to go watch k-dramas listen to k-pop do whatever you like to do and be like I practiced my listening for like 12 hours today because all I did was watch k-dramas it was great I learned so much okay listen Linda you probably didn't Linda <laughs> okay so as a beginner listening to k-pop and watching k-dramas actually isn't that beneficial because you don't know that many vocabulary words and you don't know that much grammar so in the end it all just goes over your head I mean maybe maybe you'll learn a word or two I know I mean if you were being ambitious maybe you'll learn three no I'm just kidding um, but it's really not that beneficial and it's not the best use of your time especially when it comes to listening because you know it's meant for native speakers to be honest sometimes I watch a drama and I don't know what they're saying so yeah I think we should just, just be a little slower guys be a little slower so my tip to you is to get some kind of audio lesson so whether you're using your textbook and it comes with a CD or you're using talk to me in Korean's Iyagi series to practice your listening or whatever you're using make sure it's like a course and make sure that it comes with a transcript transcripts a key I've said this before and I will say it again transcripts are key guys they're key so when you're listening to a dialogue um, you'll notice that you don't understand everything or at least if you're challenging yourself appropriately you don't understand everything and after you listen to it once you listen to it twice you listen to it three times and you're like okay that's it that's all I don't know <laughs> then when you look at that transcript you'll notice hey 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 not cool I know this word I know that word and this word and that other word and what about that one I definitely know that one but I didn't hear any of these words so um, that's probably because you're not used to hearing that word being spoken or perhaps you learned the pronunciation of that word incorrectly so your brain didn't recognize it when it heard it you know that's the thing that happens to me all the time um, so make sure especially when you're a beginner when you are learning vocabulary you really really need to have that audio track to accompany it to make sure that you're pronouncing things correctly to make sure that you are going to recognize that word when you hear it so with the transcript I want you guys to really highlight all the words you didn't hear make sure that you're pronouncing them correctly go listen to go listen to a native speaker pronounce them on an online dictionary or something like that um, ask your friend if you have a Korean friend you know um, and then once you've gone over all those words and you've gone over the grammar that perhaps you didn't quite recognize when you first heard it I want you to go listen to that dialogue again or that audio um, session again and just be like okay and really listen for those words and train your ear to hear them so that when you're in an actual situation where you hear those words in real life you'll be like I got you boo I got you and you'll actually recognize them I promise you it'll make such a difference such such a difference I remember before I went to Korea my main focus was listening I spent like I think I spent 75 hours studying listening before going to Korea like Oh my gosh so make sure you focus on listening I know it's not the most exciting thing um, because a lot of us just want to learn words or go straight into grammar because we're grammar drunkies but listening is so important it's half the conversation just saying tip number five so my last 
tip, oh, it looks like I'm slapping you. I promise I'm not. My last tip or tip number five is to review. I know, guys, I know how tempting it is to always want to be moving forward, make feel like we're making progress. Lesson one, done. Lesson two, done. Like, yes. You know what I'm talking about? Always like continuously moving forward. But I think it's important to remember that if you don't review and if you forget what was in lesson one, once you're on lesson five, you're not actually going anywhere so the metaphor that i like to use for this is if you are building a bridge right you're building a bridge from one side of i don't know a cliff to another side of a cliff right if you're building that bridge you're like lesson one done first part of the bridge lesson two second part of the bridge lesson three right if you don't go back and maintain what you built if you don't go back and make sure that those pieces of wood are still sturdy and that those nails didn't like get all rusty right they're gonna fall apart behind you and then you're just in this middle of nowhere okay that's gonna be you if you don't go back and review okay i know it's not exciting to review because we always want to move forward i know been there done that but if you're not reviewing you know it, you're, you're not gonna get anywhere and you're gonna have to go back and start all over <laughs> so <laughs> make sure that you take some time to review if every day or once a week just review okay review it's it's just better though I'll just just do it please just do it okay take my word take my word Alrighty, so I hope you guys found those five tips helpful. Um, I really tried to pick my best five tips, honestly. There's so much information I want to share with you guys. So yeah, I'm going to summarize those tips for you guys in the description box because I know I got, I, I'm really chatty and maybe you got confused. I'm sorry, my bad. Um, there will also be a link to the vocabulary video that I talked about where I talk specifically about how I learned vocabulary. And I'm also going to link you guys with a link to how I studied Korean for my first two months of study going from absolute beginner to testing into an intermediate class uh, after those two months. Uh, hopefully those resources that I talk about and the way I studied will help you guys out if you feel super motivated. Uh, anyway, I'll see you guys next time because your girls got to get to class. Uh, tell me about you guys. Bye-bye.